a heart attack. Fast fatal heart impact. Past painful scars. In fact, I blast tasteful bars and past. I back up my actions. Fact, don't ask. Grab reactions. Jack attack with every word. Then act with class as they hear me snap. I got nothing to lose. Cause I fought and felt the bruise. Now I'm not the one confused. Call the shots and they produce. I ain't boss. I'm finally loose. Pick a new soul bird's juice. I need the views to boost me to a new abuse of being used. Everybody wants a piece now. Y'all can rest in peace now. You're dead to me, so peace out. Remember, you're discreet now. Get ready for defeat. Alrighty, hello, hello everybody, this is Kirisho here, before I do begin, I do want to say if I do sound less energetic, or just sound less, you know, into the story, I'm currently trying to recover from food poisoning, so there is that. Anyways, let's just get into the story now. In the last part, we had Deku and his crew. Now. It, was, it has been over two years, close to three, just two months off, since the apocalypse. And right now, everybody, they have found out quite a bit. Deku and his team, they've revealed to everybody that they, that they have discovered a hive. Now, or as Deku does prefer to call it, the pit. The pit is a place where zombies are believed to be created. Right now, there's not really too much information to go off of. However, the evidence they do have is of a mimic. A mimic is not something that would be traditionally found in nature. Its body seems to be covered in bone, along with that the way it runs. It seems more animalistic. However, it does have higher brain function, from what they can tell. Now, basically, the mimics are created by a hive, and then there are also the other variants. It explains certain things that they do. And right now, a lot of people, they are learning about the information. However, they are still somewhat curious. Deku and his people, they've been stockpiling technology and robot parts, along with even robots, to try and fight whatever the fuck is under a hospital. Now, a lot of people, they were very concerned. And so was even Deku. Deku, right now, he believes that they're on a timetable. Because Kendo's condition, it's been declining. She was fine for the first year, he thought. But there were the voices and the whispers. And now, it's almost been close to two, and she's physically in decline of her health. Now, with that, we do currently pick up to Kendo. Who, right now, she did follow the advice of a doctor. She, well, asked them questions, and they did have some concerns. And Kendo, right now, she does go walking out of the bathroom and try to think about the information she may have just found out. Right now, the doctor, they had different theories and different things they posed to her. And she wasn't really too sure. At first, it didn't seem to make sense. I mean, the idea was just sort of off. And... Well, the doctor, they just did want to be thorough, so Kendo had to check. But right now, she's just concerned. There is a strange thing going on with her eyes. Along with that, there is certain other things happening. Now, with that Kendo, she is actually a bit more worried. She doesn't know how to tell Deku. She also doesn't know how to explain to him exactly what's going on with her. Because it's going to be a little bit big. Now, with that, we do currently pick, over, pick up with Deku. Deku, he did leave a note for Melissa. Ask her if she can build a very large bomb. And right now, Melissa, she is going through a few things in her head. She is looking into different ways to create different items and objects. And after talking to to May, the May, talking to Momo and even Melissa. Melissa, yeah, she was a bit more tight-lipped about building weapons. She does understand what they're doing, but until they have a better plan, a thorough plan, she won't doesn't really want to get involved. Now, their main ideas are basically this: destroy the tunnel, and let them starve, or 
just collapse the entire area. Sink an entire city block on top of the hive. Okay, that sounds possible, in theory. With superpowers, it would be definitely possible. However, right now, that sounds way too dangerous. The amount of firepower needed to take down an entire city block, let alone just a single building, is a lot. And that says quite a bit. Now, there was also plan B. Basically use a zero pointer and toss it into a hive. Now, getting that thing active along with an entire army of robots, that would not go unseen or unheard in the city. And that would also cause a bit more problems. They would be destroying buildings left and right just walking through the area. And the zero pointer, if it falls a mile down a hole, if it does sustain enough damage, it could blow up. And basically be their nuke. However, zombies could escape the hive at the same time. The idea is to close off the hive and throw a zero pointer in there. Or just have an army of robots head inside and destroy everything. And then there was plan C. Collapse the entire area and light it up. Fill it with gasoline and light a, light a match. Now, there are many problems with all these plans. And right now, Deku and everybody, they are trying to get everything put together. Some people are trying to formulate a better plan. Some people are trying to find better ways to do things. And some, they're starting to prepare. They've been trying to reach out for help and spread this information around. They found proof of a hive. And right now, if people in other cities know about this, they can pass the information along, and one day, they can all take out zombies. Japan might be free one day. It might go back to the survivors. Now, with that, we do currently pick with May, who, after trying to think about what to do and exactly what to make, she's come up with a few ideas. And right now, one of those ideas, it actually would do a lot better than an explosive device. May has had the idea to create thermite. Now, what is thermite? It is something capable of melting straight through solid steel. Set some on a tank and you can burn a hole through it like acid. Through something simple. Now, May did at least have a few things to go with this. And she didn't even she did even at least ask people if they can find either information online with the internet or even in person on the areas they would need to put this at. And right now they need to try and look into exactly the hive. Find out entrances and exits. Because if they don't know where these things could leave, then they could cause a bigger problem. Now, this is a big thing. Many people are preparing. Right now, some people are filling up large, large gas tanks or large gas trucks with gasoline. And others, they are helping to collect the resources. And many people, they are also trying to repair robots. Right now, a lot of people, they're trying to pick between a plan. Which one would sound the best? And there was even the idea of executing all three of them at once. Use a the thermite to seal the tunnels, fill gasoline from the hospital, and send in the robots. Basically, it's like this. If the robots, they go down there and they're not the ones able to fight or take down the hive, then fill the air with gasoline. The robots, they would explode already, causing some damage. And while the hive, they do try to get out or go up to the hospital level, then they just use a zero pointer. The place could collapse and then they just light whatever is left on fire. Now, a lot of people did somewhat agree with these ideas. They want to try executing plan B first, then they want to try executing, well, plan A, and then they want to try executing plan C. This all does sound very dangerous. And many people, yeah, they do understand the repercussions of what could happen. And right now, they're all scattering for it. Deku included. He was helping people 
fill up large gas trucks. And using the Yairozu debit cards or even credit cards, it was a lot simpler. Well, they could gain access to the main pumps or even just really find these large gas vehicles on highways or just anywhere else there were large amounts of cars abandoned. The idea was basically a lot, a lot more simple. Use what they can find and store gasoline. Even if they had to put it in drums and put it in the back of a giant truck that hauls stuff, they need as much as they can get. Now, this was something that a lot of people, they were confused with. And there was even the fact that they didn't have to try and hold off zombies. Now, everybody, they're gearing up for this large event. And right now we do currently pick up with somebody who, they're sitting in a room. There's barely a light on. And right now, they're sitting down with a meal in front of them and going to scroll through radio signals. As we do have where you go to scroll past numbers to broadcast, they've heard over a thousand times. And currently, when they do go to switch on a different channel, they do hear the following thing. On the channel, there used to be a repeating broadcast. However, it seems to have been overtaken. Hello, broadcasting to everybody on this channel. Is there anybody here? Please respond. Uh, hello. This being with the person, they do go to drop their fork. I'm immediately going to press down towards the button since they haven't heard another human talk, at least from outside their little area. Hello? Yes, hello, I'm sorry. I wasn't aware there was anyone left on this channel. I mean, the broadcast went down some time ago, but it's been, well, repeating since it got put back up. Who is this? Okay, um, sorry. Listen, what city are you currently in? Oh, um, then I'm going to say the city. As the person they would explain to Overhaul, or Chizuki, that right now, he needs to spread the message to any survivors inside of his city. There is a hive. There is a nest. Hmm? Excuse me? Yes, listen, I don't have time to explain. I'm trying to broadcast this to every channel we can. But there is a nest inside of your city. More than likely. Have you been seeing strange infected? Um, yes, I have. I've seen some. I mean, I'm a scientist after all. A doctor, actually. I've been trying to research many things about them. Look into them and find out what's going on with them. Why exactly certain mutations are present? I mean, I found strange things doing deep dives into their biology, but... Okay, listen, doctor, right now you need to be aware. There is a hive creating the infected inside your city. If you can find it and destroy it, with the help of other survivors, you might be able to retake your city from the infected with time. Starve them out or leave them to starve. Or they'll just start rotting like actual corpses. We believe that there's something preserving them. And that right now, if they are left unchecked, the infection will become more and more aggressive as it has been in the last couple of years. Now, overall he is quite surprised. As he would try to explain, he does understand. That would actually somewhat go with his research, but the fact that what they're doing, what they're talking about, do they even really believe it's possible? Hmm? Yes, currently we do have somebody planning something out. Listen, you're, a, you're at least an hour or two away. I would suggest, if you could, talk to people. And if you can't, then maybe it would probably be best for you and your group to leave the city. How are you guys doing resource-wise? Hmm? Resource-wise? Yes, um, correct. Resource-wise, we're barely sustainable. Our numbers are low, and right now, we're not looking too good here. I mean, we already thought that we might have to open up our scavenging area more, but certain people here have been very aggressive. And they've been demanding a lot from other groups. While we've been able to stay hidden, 
we do not believe that will, will last for it. We would we do not believe that that will last for very long. We believe that whenever we are found, we might either be killed, or more than likely, I'll be forced to work for them. I'll be their doctor, and my research will hit many barriers. Okay, listen, if you and your group can manage to come to our location, come to our city, you're a doctor. That is a very rare talent. And if you know anything about tech, anything about, well, just certain stuff, we could use your help. We have many technicians working on robots. And right now, we also do have the help of David Shield, his daughter, and another mechanic that, from what we can tell, they are except exceptionally skilled. Did you, did you just say David Shield? Yes, I did. Well, I've never seen the man. He actually has been here. I've received confirmation from many other people. And right now, we're working to take back the city. Please understand. Any help you could provide us would be essential to our success. I mean, even, even some of your research, if it's good. Now, overall, he does get to look down towards his right. Looking towards the sample he does have. Right now, currently, this is the only one that does exist. It's an experimental cure. If it works, then he could save millions. Billions, possibly. However, there's a problem. The infected, they can't be cured. He's thought of it. I mean, even trying to work on husk, they don't just turn back to humans. They just... They're finally able to die. They die from the injection. It's not that they are undead. They just... They just don't seem to live. There's no other way to explain it. I mean, there's no life signs in certain ones, but there's also heartbeats in others. They're just... They're not capable of turning back to humans because if they are given the cure, their biology turns to normal. And it just goes fucking haywire because of what's happened to the body. Now, overall, he does try to think. As right now, he does going to stand up and walk away from his computer. Or, no, not his computer. His radio. And right now, he does have to pack up. Right now, the group here, they need some convincing. And if they're able to head towards that city, from what they hear, camps with fresh food, fresh water, and they have electricity. Along with that, they're safe and they have robots. That shows quite a lot to him. And right now, David Shield, being a man of, well, like-minded intellect, the two of them might be able to find a cure. Maybe do something. Get over the wall he's hit with his research. Now, with that being said, we do actually have our overhaul. He does start to talk to a few people. And later that day, they would make the journey. Now, with that being said, that was about two or three days ago, and we do cut to the current time with Deku, who they've been preparing for everything for the last week. And right now, Deku, he is looking to his left to see Kendo. Kendo, right now, she's laying down asleep facing away from him, and he knows that she has been somewhat distant. The episodes have stopped for now. However, Deku fears the next time they start, they won't stop. He timed it out. He knows how long there is between every few episodes. There's about, what, 45 minutes to an hour and a half between certain ones. There was that time before, though. They went from every, what, couple days, every four or five, to every other day. And then... She just wake up screaming in her sleep. And then there's that time where it happens twice a day. And then there was just every couple hours, but they're getting closer. I mean, they'll stop for a few days and he's not too sure why they do that, but 
they'll just go quiet. And then there's that quiet. Kendo finds it disturbing. She got used to those things being inside her head. And Deku, well, he does understand that. Him being used to the voices in his own, there is the fact that he does worry. These things are just drawing her more and more towards the line of insanity. And he doesn't know when she'll step over it. Now, Deku does gotta get up. Him going to walk in the bathroom, and then, well, going through the process or motions of it, before he does gotta stand back up. Now, Deku does gotta walk over to the counter and wash his hands. As already he does so, he does gotta turn around and try to think. Right now, he does gotta look at himself in the mirror. Before he does go to ring up his arm and go to flex his metal arm. Him flexing his fingers and at least going to look at the range of motion he has with it. Now, Deku, he does just stare at the arm. As it's a tool now. It's not the hand he once used to know. Now, Deku, he does just stand there for a minute. Before he does go to turn around look at the large mirror that is there. Now, Deku does stand there for a minute, staring at himself. And he does go to look around the bathroom, trying to somewhat take his mind off of what's wrong with Kendo, and even their plan. Now, as Deku does go to do this, he does notice something strange. There's, well, I mean... There's a container in the waste disposable bin. Now, Deku is going to walk over. Him reaching out his middle arm and going to grab it. There's a bag here. Now, Deku is going to look inside. Before he does going to pull something out, his eyes do go to widen. And he does currently go to turn and look towards Kendo. Right now, Deku... He's staring towards the bed, and he's looking her way. I mean, he saw the bag, but he just assumed it could have been full of tissues or just something with blood on it, but that wasn't it. I mean, this is better, but it's it's heavier. Deku looking down at the little thing in his hand. And right now, he does stare at it. Those two little lines. And right now, he realizes a few things. Why Kendo, she's been acting stranger. And why some of those symptoms, they raise an eyebrow to Melissa. Now, Deku, he does just going to put this down. And he would go walking back over to wash his hands, since they'd probably smell bad. Now, with that, Deku, he would go walking out into the mansion. And right now, he does try to think about what he just saw, and the information that has been hidden from him. Now, with that being said, I do hope you guys enjoyed. And have an amazing day. I'll catch you guys in the next part.